Hi, my name is Cindy Pakoulis and I'm with Long Island Skywatch. I was on WTEN Channel 10 out of Albany on Monday, May 2nd in a segment called Secrets in the Sky. It is time now for a News 10 special report, Secrets in the Sky. There is a conspiracy theory that is many convinced they are slowly being poisoned. News 10's Marie Luby has been investigating this for us and she joins us now to explain more. Marie. Well, those white streaks you see behind airplanes, are they natural exhaust or something more? There is a movement growing worldwide by millions who are certain someone is spraying toxic chemicals on all of us. Questions about what's happening in our sky are popping up everywhere. Motives behind so-called geoengineering are varied. Some believe it's an effort to curb global warming. It's Bonnie Hogue of Shushin believes it's a military it's operation. You can see this kind of, someone calls this a plaid, the cross-hatching. She says planes are spraying haze. aluminum and other toxic metals, which are being blamed for skyrocketing rates of a variety of illnesses. What is more fundamental than breath? What's more fundamental to life on Earth than breath? This is theft of breath. This is genocide. This is poison. This is murder. This former FBI chief says a world government is behind the spraying. The reason, according to Ted Gunderson, population control. They're, they're death dumps. They're dumping poison on us to reduce the world population. It's a pretty um, far-fetched idea that uh, these, these aircraft could be spreading much quantity of anything other than the, the exhaust. Dr. Kevin Rhodes, who specializes in atmospheric right. chemistry, says these are not chemical trails, but contrails. He explains exhaust of carbon dioxide and water can leave streaks in high altitudes and cold temperatures. The word chemtrail has never appeared in any scientific literature anywhere. When you find all these chemicals that should not be in there... Sky watchers like Cynthia Pakoulis insist the trails form deliberate grids and and linger too long to be water vapor. She spoke with me through Skype. No one has the right to alter our sky. It's, we breathe the air in, and people are getting sick, so something is causing it. How do you know this is coming from planes above and not from some other source of pollution? If it's not the planes, then what is it? If you were to load some kind of chemical agent aboard that plane that were to be spread, the very weight of that would make the plane unflyable. Bakulis and Hogue have sought out every legislator they can find, but they say no one will look or listen. There are some people that hear what you're saying and think, that's crazy. What do you say to them? It wouldn't be the first time that governments around the world have done testing on their populations unbeknownst to them. It just breaks my heart every day. But getting to the heart of the matter is not very easy. Scientists have discussed geoengineering as a possibility in the future, but they say it's not happening now. We have only scratched the surface of this story. If you want to dig deeper, you can find links to more information on our website. Marie Luby, News 10. Hi, my name is Cindy Pakoulis, and I'm with Long Island Skywatch. I was on WTEN Channel 10 out of Albany on Monday, May 2nd, in a segment called Secrets in the Sky. I'm doing this video as a follow-up to some of the comments that were made by Dr. Rhodes in that segment. And one of the first comments that Dr. Rhodes made that I want to counter is when he stated, if you were to load some type of chemical agent aboard that plane that were to be spread, the very weight of that would make the plane unflyable. Well, that may be true if you're talking about a fully loaded passenger plane. Um, it obviously could not hold thousands of gallons of chemicals to be sprayed in the atmosphere, but what about the hundreds of aerial tanker planes that are already in service? What about, say, the KC-767, which is the new tanker that the Air Force selected in February of 2011? This plane has a maximum takeoff weight of 186,880 kilograms. When you take away the plane's weight, empty weight, of 82,377 kilograms, and you add that to the maximum fuel load, 72,877 kilograms, you get a total weight of 155,254 kilograms, which leaves you with 31,626,000 ,000 kilograms to spare and use however the aircraft owners deem fit, be it the government or be it a corporation. So you most certainly could put chemicals to be dispersed in the atmosphere in one of those planes if there was nothing else on board. The other point that Dr. Rhodes made was when he said that the term chemtrails has never been used in scientific literature. 
I find that quite interesting considering the fact that he's a scientist and I'm sure he's aware that new words are created all the time based on discoveries. In fact, new words are created all the time based on their use in, the, in our lexicon. For example, when the BP oil spill took place last year, top kill was created, bottom kill was added to the dictionary. So every year there are new words that are created. So I really, that, that point that he made was quite moot if you ask me. Um, I would also like to add a little bit more information on to one of my comments at the end of the program where, um, the, where Ms. Luby asked me what I would say to people who thought I was crazy to even suggest that the government would possibly be spraying us. To that point, I implore everyone to do a Google search on government testing. Um, the United States has a very long sordid history of testing on the population, as do most governments in the world. In fact, in October of 2010, the U.S. apologized to the citizens of Guatemala when we, for testing that we did on approximately 700 Guatemalans, we injected them with uh, VD so that we could test penicillin. And that was during the years of 1946 to 1948. There were the MK Ultra CIA mind control experiments. The, um, Britain has come out numerous times apologizing it to its people, even stating in one article that it tested biological and germ warfare on millions of people over the course of several years, in fact, many years. Um, the U.S. government even had a project SHAD where they tested on army, uh, on navy men, on ships. So I'm going to attach all, the, all these links at the end of this video. So please, I implore you, look at them, educate yourself on the aerosol program, get involved, tell people, call your legislators, because uh, this is happening, and it's happening every day, and the longer it happens, the worse the state of the planet and the worse the state of our health. Thank you. Let's look at the body language of this cat here. This is a fear-based personality for sure. Don't you think so? Dr. Rhodes. This is theater. He has nothing on the merits. He's trying to disparage the whole notion. As an academic and a teacher at Siena, he has a lot to protect. Why? Because he's written papers on atmospheric science that completely ignored the presence of aluminum and barium in the atmosphere. How would it look if a scientist involved in the specialty of atmospheric chemistry were revealed to have dry labbed every experiment that he had been associated with, every publication of scientific paper? What would happen? Who would be the first to be fired? Who would lose their tenure? He's got a lot to protect here. This is the most likely scenario is that Dr. Rhodes was told somewhere along the line to ignore the chemtrail issue because it doesn't mix with the global warming theory when you have hundreds of planes in the air spewing carbon dioxide. How would you explain this to the public who has taken the word of the IPCC and the United Nations on the credibility of global warming and carbon dioxide? So basically it all comes down to funding scientific grants from the National Science Foundation, the Rockefellers, 